So hello, here I am with Neil Pearson, um, all the way in British Columbia, and we're going to have a short conversation this morning about um, therapeutic yoga and pain and uh, Neil's broad range of no knowledge on both of those subjects. And Neil is going to be a presenter at the Montreal International Symposium of Therapeutic Yoga, happening here in Montreal at the end of October. So hello, Neil. Good morning, Roseanne. How are you doing? I'm really well, thanks. Great. Okay, so um, I'm interested in your in your therapeutic yoga classes that you offer um, in Penticton. And my understanding is that you merge um, a sort of Western knowledge of anatomy and physiology with the eight limbs of yoga. So I'm curious to hear how you do that and how that happens in class. Um, well, I guess I have to say that it starts before even the class starts. Okay. Um, all the people who come into the class have been uh, assessed more with a physiotherapy assessment. So because I'm a physiotherapist, I see everyone one-on-one -on -one first for at least one appointment, some people two or three at a time, uh, or two or three sessions, so that we can uh, sort of sort of the, sort of the more biomechanical aspects of what's happening. Uh, this... Um, uh, seeing people one-on-one -on -one helps me with knowing what to do with them in class, but it also helps with uh, making sure that they feel safe and know how hard to push things and what to avoid during the class. So then, of course, that carries over into the class. So within the class, there's not a lot of focus on um, not a lot of focus on anatomy. So it's not like a, a physiotherapy exercise routine. It's it's definitely yoga. Um, but of course, with my knowledge, I can sort of you know bring that into what I'm doing. But I don't talk a lot about those that in class. In, mm -hmm. in the classes, I spend a lot more time talking about um, the eight limbs of yoga, about um, getting people to uh, probably the most two most important things are get them to be uh, aware of their breath mm -hmm. and aware of their body and aware of their mind, and trying to um, as we go through using uh, the yoga asana get them to try to pay as much attention as possible to those other aspects so that um, we're trying to sort of get the, the body and the breath back. See, a lot of people who have chronic pain, um, the pain changes the way they breathe. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the change in the breathing feeds right back in and makes the pain worse. Mm -hmm. uh, or the what can happen is the pain creates this... Uh, it actually creates changes in your brain so that your brain gets this very narrow sort of intense focus on the pain. Mm -hmm. and, um, your brain sort of stops paying attention to your body, mm -hmm. which is really odd to think of, you know, you say to a person, well, you know, uh, tell me about how your back feels, and they tell me all about the pain. And I say, okay, well, tell me about how your back feels. And, and when they get to it, they realize sometimes that they actually can't even feel their back at all. They can feel they can tell you everything about the pain, but nothing about their back. Mm -hmm. And so we're really trying to get people to get back in touch with these two such important aspects first of, of being able to feel their breath and feel when they're breathing well and, and when they're breathing, um, trying to get so that they can calm their breath and then get so that they can calm their breath and their body and then get so that they can calm their breath and their body and their mind all together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that is, is, is it's all about the, the yoga of reconnecting, right? Um, you know, the, the, the original term of yoga has to do with yoking, connecting. And uh, chronic pain is pretty much the, uh, the perfect thing to disconnect you from everything in life. Yeah, so uh, true. And so the, 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 uh, using the, the different aspects of yoga, um, you know, one aspect of yoga is how you treat yourself. And another aspect of yoga is sort of how you act in the world. Um, another aspect of yoga is the breath. Another is uh, movement through the asana. Um, another aspect of yoga is, is it's called pratyahara, but I, what pratyahara means is um, absence or withdrawal of the senses. So the idea is that you're trying to ignore all this stuff out here and try to get your attention like inside so that, that uh, you're becoming more aware of what's happening inside. And so one of the things I should mention about the yoga classes is, is one of the things that's so important for people who have pain problems is the community that develops. Because one of the things that, that uh, chronic pain does is it isolates you. Yeah. 
we, we withdraw from other people. We stop talking about our problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we stop being around people in places that make us feel good. And uh, getting involved in a yoga class gets you back in with a whole bunch of people, mm-hmm. um, especially if it's a therapeutic class that everybody else in the classroom is, is has been in the same boat as you. Yeah. And so we get it. And um, it's, uh, you know, we are social beings and our health is, is, for the vast majority of us, our health is reliant on social interaction. Mm-hmm. And uh, a yoga class allows you to be there in this very safe social interaction place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and no, not much different than being in a, um, a church community hall with mm-hmm. a whole other people from faith, mm-hmm. right? There's, there's this, the, the, the community and the safety mm-hmm. is a huge part of, of uh, the therapy. That's so interesting, yeah, because I think that, um, I think there's a, a kind of, when you, when you said that you have therapeutic group classes, I was kind of surprised, because my understanding is that group, group ther- I mean, yoga therapy happens on a one-on-one basis right rather than a group basis so but it seems like you go through a process where you work individually you do a a kind of assessment of where people are at and then they come into the class together and part of it and part of one of the benefits is community and group work and so yeah that's really that's really interesting that's part of our healing right I, I, I don't think I've ever met a person who has a complex chronic pain problem who would say that they're going out and being around people who make them feel good Hmm. Like they they don't want to talk about it anymore. They they feel like people don't want to be around them anymore, hmm. right? Because they can't do what they could do before. So uh, it's um, uh, and I say that because I want to make sure that the people who are listening to this realize that it's not an added benefit. It's one of the key benefits hmm. of getting involved in something. And, hmm. and uh, in the end, to me, it wouldn't matter whether it's a Tai Chi class or a Qigong class or a gentle stretching class hmm. or a, uh, gentle Pilates class, that, that getting involved in some sort of place where you are there with other people with the same kind of conditions mm-hmm. is really, really important to, to health. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, y- your pain is, is your specialty and your area of expertise, um, which I find really fascinating. And I'm just, I'd like to hear how you became interested in pain management and how it became like a, a career track for you. How I got involved with it really was curiosity. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I graduated from university, I uh, was you know, quickly thrown in there and working with patients. And I kept on finding patients who, uh, the stories that they told me about their pain were things that I couldn't explain. Mm-hmm. So it was, um, yeah, just just they they're telling me about their story of their pain, and, and um, it just it, I just realized that the the knowledge I got in school didn't provide me with a way to explain this, and so I started to ask questions of, of colleagues and, and experts, and and found that that most of often what happened was people would say, well, that person is just an outlier. They're just they're just they're just different somehow, or or they would find this sort of I would think a very uh, circuitous way to bring them into what we understood. And uh, it, just, it just kept me with that curiosity. And, uh, in the first year that I worked, I saw these two, uh, these two fellows who just, everything they said about their pain would really not match up with what I learned. And so I, they, they really got me thinking and thinking and thinking. The more that I realized that people didn't have uh, answers, the more I started to look. And then... Um, you know, I started to look towards the, the psychology side and, and get some answers from there in terms of the, the pain that we experience, the emotional pain that we experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some similarities there, but it didn't explain everything either. And then really in the, in the 80s, people started to, to study actually pain itself. Pain science started to grow, and, and so I got really involved with reading that. And then um, by the early 90s, I guess mid-90s, I, I started work at a pain management center, started work with people who had complex chronic pain problems, mm. and then got into a big multidisciplinary pain management center where I was working with doctors and psychologists and occupational therapists and, and all these people together, and that really started to um, bring the information together. Mm. Uh, it's interesting in the yoga therapy and yoga teacher world, we still see pain as if it's something different, mm. as if it's it's an outlier, and it doesn't match up with anything else that we understand. And so we understand yoga, 
But what, what I found is that we have to teach people about, what, what I do is I go and I teach them everything I can about pain. And then say, okay, now you know all that. Hopefully you can just let it go and just teach yoga. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you treat the person in, in pain as you would any yoga student, you know, you have to take care of their pain and things like that. But if you treat them in the same way and, and provide them with what yoga provides, then you'll be doing them the best favor in the world. Whereas if you are, you as the teacher, are afraid of injuring this person and you're making your decisions based on fear, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get the, you're not going to provide the person with the same amazing benefit you can get from yoga. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so my last question for you is, um, what is your hope? This is one of the this is one of the key questions at the at the symposium as well. But what is your hope for yoga therapy, and what is your what is your vision for it? And what would you like to see happen within the field? Um, the very first thing that I would like to see happen is that the the yoga therapy uh, or yoga therapists start to be seen by medical practitioners as valuable for uh, both therapeutics and prevention. Mm. Uh, I actually think that that uh, when we get to things like pain, mm. um, one of the things that we need to do is start to demedicalize part of it. Mm. So there's some aspects of pain that we absolutely need this Western medical view and Western medical treatment. Then there's a lot of other aspects of, of pain that have way more to do with health mm. than they have to do with medical condition. And that's where, where yoga can really, really help, is, is the health side. So mm -hmm. seeing yoga as a way to uh, prevent some of these things. Mm -hmm. But then also when the person ends up in, in uh, these chronic pain situations, seeing yoga therapy as, as one of the paths that people can move forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually one of the, the best paths, but I'm, I'm sure that there are other ways to, to help people move forward as well. But what I would love to be able to see, and sort of one of the things I, I try to do, because uh, I get a chance to speak at like things like the Canadian Pain Society uh, uh, meetings, and hopefully next year I'm going to be teaching them a, a class so they can actually experience what would a therapeutic yoga class be like for people with chronic pain. Hmm. Uh, but what I want to do is get them to understand that, that this is something. It's a valuable, valuable tool. Hmm. It's not a uh, uh, yeah. When nothing else works, we'll send people there. Right? I want them to start to recognize healthcare people recognizing now this is this is an integral part, or can be an integral part of a person getting better. That's really wonderful, Neil. Um, this has been a great conversation, and uh, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Um, okay. But uh, but thank you so much. I'm just going to hit stop. Okay, and, we'll uh, see you in Montreal.